Here with your weekly football update, Borowski News. This is Jason Summers. I've got the co-head coaches here for the Albion Blue Demons, uh, Scott Farrington and Justin Huber. And uh, gentlemen, your second year. Um, talk about the transition from year one to year two. Obviously, uh, you've got uh, another a year on your belt, and that always has to be good as a coach. I think it does, and it seems to be going a lot smoother this year. Uh, things are getting done quicker. Our kids are doing better what we implemented last year. So it is a smoother transition this year than last year. It was our first year, you know. We talked earlier that, you know, we were kind of like kids in a candy store a little bit because you just want to do so much. But now we've kind of summed it up of what we really want to be about and our identity, and we've accomplished that now. So it's been going really well. I think one of the things that Coach Staten taught us was that it's easy as an assistant coach to make suggestions, but as a head coach, you have to make decisions. And uh, that's another thing I think we're getting a little bit better at, making decisions and um, looking a little more long-term. Yeah. Once you've been through something, you've got some experience there, and think what didn't work, you discard. What did work, you build on and, and uh, just go from there. Decisions, uh, that's something that sometimes people with challenge that uh, co-head coaches might have a difficult time with. Um, but you guys really made this uh, this work to your advantage of uh, being able to make decisions and delegate those type of responsibilities. I think that's a good word, delegate. There's things that Justin excels at, there's things that I'm better at, and um, between the two of us we get everything covered. Just being a head football coach in our situation, compared to you know what Coach Staten was doing, it did, there's a lot of things that need to be done. and. We just didn't feel like one person could get all the bases covered, so to speak. So uh, basically, Justin takes care of a lot of the behind the scenes stuff and as far as you know, all the many things that no one sees, ordering stuff, talking to people, dealing with uh, the media, for instance. He does all the interviews uh, for the most part. But um, you know, there's a lot of things he does, and I do a lot more of the talking because as a social studies teacher, that's what we like to do. Well, guys, uh, leadership is, uh, is critical to uh, any, any program, particularly football, and uh, you usually rely on that senior class to be the, uh, the group that uh, performs that leadership, or you expect that because they've had the experience. Talk about uh, uh, the senior class and leadership. Yeah, they've really stepped up here in the last month. Been real proud of Bo Lesh, and he's become kind of our vocal leader for the group, and just has done an outstanding job of talking to the guys and you know cheering them on and, and getting the momentum going for all of our younger guys to see. And we got a couple other guys like Jared Mack, which is more of our physical leader. You know, they don't do a lot of talking, but uh, that senior group's really coming together. They've really stepped up here the past couple of weeks of practices, and just super proud of those guys. I think you're going to see our seniors as being, you know, not just our leaders off the field, but they're also going to be our only yeah. leaders as far as production. They're the ones who've got the most experience. And then as a senior, you always have that sense of urgency that, you know, this is my last year. And even though you try to get that into the heads of the other kids, you know, we're only going to play nine games this year, everyone's important. The seniors, I think, have a better understanding of that than the other kids who always think there's going to be, you know, like a cup band, there's next year. Well, let's stay on the topic of leadership and uh, one of the key places on the field uh, is the quarterback and uh, their leadership. Uh, obviously, re graduating uh, Cade Paul a year ago, one of the outstanding uh, quarterbacks in the district, uh, a guy's uh, shoes that are hard to fill, and, and I'm sure there's been a, a battle in uh, the camp this last couple of weeks to try to find uh, who that number one's going to be. We have, and um, we've narrowed it down uh, at this point. So the problem with quarterbacks are the kids play quarterback or else the kids can play someplace else. So you're not going to have a lot of kids, you know, backing up their first team kid. They're going to go out and play, you know, wide receiver. They're going to be playing uh, maybe running back or they're going to be playing somewhere. And so our first team guy right now is going to be Blake Chance. He's really made a lot of improvement. Coach Wyatt's really worked with him. And he's he's a kid that is understanding the, the big picture of what we're wanting to do. And so that's a big, uh, a big issue for us because quarterbacks can be make the decisions out there. Uh, as freshman, we've got Karen Grinstead who's really done a nice job with that position. And then uh, kind of backing him up is Damon Sovereign, he's kind of our third guy. So we don't have a lot of depth as far as numbers go there, but we got some quality kids. And, um, you know, they're the kids that are going to be playing that spot. So it's really imperative for them to continue to be listening to what they're being told and to retain that and, and then get a chance on the field to apply. Talking about uh, offense, um, a year ago, a uh, change in the offensive philosophy and uh, you've had to now a, a full year to work with that off offense, uh, both during the season last year and in the, uh, an off season. Uh, how's the offensive uh, philosophy um, transferred or transformed over the last year? And, and certainly I think that you would feel more comfortable a year later than uh, you were last year going into a whole new philosophy. 
Well, especially since we're not playing a week zero game, we've got another week of practice here, which is going to be a real vital for us, I think. But you're right, we've had an opportunity to uh, spend some time and fine tune some stuff. Uh, again, it's the same the same process. You discard what does not fit your style, the kids that you have, and so and then emphasize what does. And so we have a lot of athletic kids who can uh, catch the football, and um, you know it's our job. And then as an offense, to make sure they're able to to catch and throw the ball. And then mixing a little running game with that, I would feel like we got a, a good inside running game uh, going to be the potential for. And so those are the kinds of things that we're looking to do. And then you you try to adapt what you're doing to the teams that you're going to face each week. Well, a, a bruising a tailback uh, can be havoc for a defense. And uh, I'm reminded of how you played, Coach Uber. Uh, not necessarily the the biggest back, but you you were looking to deliver a, a, a blow at contact, and I think Jeremy Mackinac is one of those kind of athletes at that tailback. Um, obviously, having uh, overcome some injuries, but he's a guy that's a physical back that could uh, could really help your offense. Yeah, he is, and that's why we call Jer a physical leader because because he's just got that stature about him. But Jer Jer's one of those kids who's been working hard. He's been in the weight room. Uh, He's putting a lot more effort in at practice than he has in the last couple of years. He's really stepped up. I think, you know, that senior leadership kicks in there. And we also have Dawson Hermson and Sean Good. And all three of those backs have been really productive at, at camp and practice the last couple of weeks. And I'm really happy how they've come on. So we've got three really good backs. I can see us using them at any time, depending on what we're doing. But just really proud of them. And, and like I said, we want to be the most physical backs in Southern Iowa. Well, you, you, I look at your offense and uh, your philosophy really is to create space for your offense and to take a, and you know really cause defensive players to have to make decisions. But having running backs that are physical, um, that, that puts a stress on the defense that, that allows you to have those spaces. Go ahead. Uh, we, we need to, both of those need to complement each other, yeah. the passing mm -hmm. game and the running game. So. Um, you know, in years past, we were able to rely pretty heavily on the run. We had, you know, much bigger linemen, more physical uh, kids, even than um, you know that we have now. So we have to utilize what we have available to us. And if one thing's being stopped, we have to be able to uh, you know, use the other to, as a weapon and keep the defense a little off off guard or off balance, I suppose is a better word. And that's kind of our goal. So those are some decisions that will have to be made, even on the field by by our players. And and it will be vital that they give us good feedback. As far as when they come off the field, what's going on and what's not going on, who can, who's, who's weak, who's strong, and, and we'll be using all that as part of what we're trying to do, which is, you know, as an offense, score points. Well, an offense uh, goes where the line takes it, and I know Coach Uber is a running back, uh, previous running back, has to work with the running backs, so you know the value of having a strong offensive line. You put yourself in that place as a coach to help uh, work with that, with the offensive line. Talking about big shoes, a quarterback to fill, trying to fill the shoes of uh, Trent Garver, that's that's not possible. So this is a this is not only a, a new um, leader at quarterback, but a new offensive line you're putting together. It is, and, and Coach Farrington works with our offensive line, with Coach Parks, and I go there and we work on the same So three coaches constantly coaching our lineman up. We've talked to them a lot about their they're our most important players on the field. You know, they they make our offense work, and without them, we don't have them. And We've always stressed our linemen, and I and I think you can't stress that enough. And you know, even our running backs, I'm like you compliment them on everything they do because you're not going to gain a yard without them. But they're coming along a long way. I mean, Coach Farrington's been working with them, Coach Parks, and we're getting where we need to be with them. Well, let's uh, go to the other side of the field. Uh, the offense will uh, put the fans in the seats, and the defense uh, will chase down championships. And this this defense, uh, uh, you got first of all. Uh, kudos, you've got a great coaching staff on the defensive side as well, and um, they just do a really good job of teaching and coaching up um, what I think's um, always been a very stingy defense. Yeah, that's true. I mean, <clears throat> Coach Chad Odeffer does our defensive coordinating, and he's got a lot of good help from Coach Mick, Coach Beckwith, uh, Coach Crawl, Coach Hill. Those guys all fill in, and they're all very knowledgeable about what they want to accomplish, and they're very detail oriented, a lot, of, mm -hmm. a lot of different techniques they use on defense and uh, they run through those. Uh, they keep our kids' minds free so that they can play football instead of worrying about a hundred different kinds of defenses. Our kids are you know, taught to react to situations and adapt to what the other team does, but uh, under the umbrella of just a, a basic, simple concept, which has been very successful in the past. And so uh, we're going to uh, expect our defense to, to be much improved. We feel like we're very athletic in, in areas that uh, 
you know, especially in the defensive backfield, we got some strong kids there and uh, some good hitters and, and at linebacker. Uh, we're a little undersized up front, probably. But anybody can see that from our roster. But what we want to make up for with is a lot of effort, a lot of intensity, and you know, just the great technique can overcome a lot of things because this is high school football, and and there's some things that you can make up for. And, and a lack of size is one of them. So we're going to really just get after people this year. Well, the, the philosophy and the coaching, uh, Ode uh, Coach Odeffer does a great job in teaching and, and uh, the philosophy is like kids play. And so when they aren't thinking about all the, the different assignments um, that they can just do their alignment, and, and you have that shark tank and mentality where everyone pursues the football. And that's been the, the biggest compliment I can give um, the defense is that you can expect to have 11 hats to where the ball's at. Yeah, you do, and we've been doing a lot of pursuits lately, you know. In the past, you know, year it didn't seem like we did as much, and Coach O's really emphasizing that year. We won 11 guys in the ball, and he brought a picture up the other day and showed them from years past of our guys. And, and we're really talking about being the most physical team in Southern Iowa. I think that's one of our, our goals this year, and that's what we want to do offensively and defensively. And Coach O and his staff do a great job of making our defense really physical. Well, physical um, football oftentimes gets mistaken for – uh, size and I think the the greatest uh, attributes of physical football lie on the inside and that's been a part of the coach state philosophy is your kids play with great passion and enthusiasm and um, when you have that you can overcome the physical side of, of the game of football and play physical well 11 brothers are hard to beat and if you're all working together I just like you said you know, you, you've got to have that intensity that and that comes from within and so uh, we keep we keep uh, Reminding our kids that they need to bring that to the table, you know, their best effort every rep and, and play like it's a game and 100% in every uh, situation. So it's a constant reminder because as human beings, we tend to be a little lazy, I think, but as football players, we can't afford that. And especially as undersized football players, we can't. You know, our motto is hustle, hit, never quit. And that's what we intend to do this year. Well, gentlemen, uh, we're about ready to lace them up and uh, get underway. And I know that uh, as a coach, but more importantly, as a player, you just want to go ahead bang on somebody else and uh, you're going to get the show started on the road in the oldest rivalry in high school football and that's Albia Centerville. Yeah it is and it's exciting we're getting to go down there and uh, ready to play. I think the guys are ready to play and they've been talking about it for a while so it's it's time to get going. You know and they got our they got the trophy right now so we want to get our trophy back that's our that's our main idea there from Centerville. Centerville is going to be a real you know a solid football team they're they're looking as a you know Somewhere between them, Sheridan and PCM at that district level, they're going to be right in that mix for that championship. And so, you know, we don't have any weak teams on our schedule, especially in the off, off uh, out of district games. And, and starting out with the Central Big Red is a good way to get, you know, get your feet right in there and, and right in the old uh, frying pan or into the fire, whichever word you like there. But we're going to get right in there, jump right in that pool, and, and uh, we're not toe dipping or anything like that. So it's going to get started, and we're just going to, you know, get down there, and that should be a great football game between two teams that really are looking forward to the big things this year. Well, we're ready to jump in as well. And uh, here at KIIC, you can catch us on uh, 96.7. And of course, anywhere on the web at www.kicradio.com and download that Thunderbolt app on your smartphone, Android or iPhone uh, device and uh, catch all the action on Friday night. And we'll, of course, we'll start our pregame at six o'clock and take you right to the midnight hour as we move into the locker room show with all the coaches from around the area. And we'll be back here to check in with Oski News on their weekly football update. This is Jason Summers saying so long and goodbye for now.